company. So then what should that particular company do? Uh, and v versus supposing I am Atta Rice, so then what should that kind of a business do? So, you know, so it becomes even more imperative right now. Uh, and, and only the, so the relevance of strategic marketing continues and is more stronger. What changes is the various parameters inside of it. And, and what are the things that need to stay? What are the things that need to go? That is what makes the difference. Oh, that's wonderful. So, we just say, hello. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's go to the second slide. Uh, can can we have a second slide, please? We. Yeah, 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 one second, one second. Yeah, please. You can. Yeah. So you mean to say uh, the difference between uh, strategic marketing and the marketing is completely different. And now what we're seeing is how uh, they should marketing and business evolve with social distancing and remote work becoming the new normal because uh, things are get just you know coming to just normality even though we do not we didn't have any vaccine but yes there are some kind of precautionary wherever we're seeing supposing if there's an experience in marketing uh, the venues are especially thinking of how we need to activate even though the uh, internal marketing and you know keep uh, the security and the safety reasons. So, uh, how how this actually will change with the you know business evolving the social distance and voting work becoming this? What do you what do you right. say on this? Yes. So, uh, I, I think in these last three months and across the world, and not just in India, but across the world, uh, a lot of a lot in the business has changed. Uh, for instance, a lot of organizations, larger organizations, did have work from home. Uh, a lot of startups also did have work from home as an option. Uh, but, we, but you know, we were still kind of fumbling for the last few years as to understand how to make it really productive. I guess in these three months, we've understood that it is possible and uh, business can continue as usual, uh, you know, if we better our technology tools for remote working. So that is now no more going to be a luxury. It's probably going to be a norm. The very fact, okay. Suresh, that you and I are talking like this, uh, itself is, is is proof of the fact that you know uh, you know discussions can happen, panel discussions can happen, and we don't need to necessarily meet face to face. Of course, that said, the human uh, touch is always there, but uh, how it affects in businesses that I think we've understood that we can do work from home, we can do remote work. Um, you know, somebody, a leader, or anybody, anybody in the in the, in the chain uh, can be situated out of let's say a, a Google employee can be situated not necessarily in the Google uh, office, office yes. location, he can, you know, kind of uh, be located in his house or, you know, as long as work is getting done. So I think that is one thing that is uh, going to go beyond not just money, but it's going to be as the business format itself. And again, like I'm uh, repeatedly saying that it would again be applicable to all sorts of businesses. It would be applicable uh, to it probably except as I as I'm thinking aloud, maybe uh, you know in the hospitals there of you, there also we have actually technology where consultation can be done online. But nevertheless, the patient has to meet the doctor. So, uh, but barring that, I think everywhere else we can uh, you know look at businesses uh, having work from home and remote working as a very common thing. Now that's the larger picture. When we you know kind of uh, zone in down to marketing. Here it will change because now, uh, so when, when, when a consumer, you and I, we want to buy a product, whatever the product, be it the watch, be it the blazer, be it anything, or be it a TV, I would like to, uh, while do my research on one side, but I would also like to actually go to the store, go to the brick and mortar store and kind of you know, touch, feel, and uh, then do my purchase. Um, so while up until three months ago, um, you know, I had all my technology and very much there. I had my e-commerce sites like Amazon where I could check out the options of the various TVs or whatever that I want to purchase. Uh, that would be like, let's say 40% of the research and 60% is where I'm actually visiting the various stores and then kind of this proportion might, this ratio might change now. 
this ratio could now be you know let's say uh, 60% or 70% or 80% depending on the product that we're talking about uh, could be more of you know you know finding out online purchases uh, seeing influencers talk about the various uh, products that you want to talk about or in that you want to buy or even uh, the, you know the reviews of bought previous customers who have bought that product so i think all of this will now take a lot more uh, forefront uh, position so that's it for marketers how does it change i think uh, the message of what the product and the brand is standing for still says the same but how we're going to say this uh, and digital has already been on a wave even before the pandemic right for the last 10 years it's it's on a high anyways and it, and that is the way forward this is going to be a lot more uh, digital is going to be a lot more virtual uh, artificial intelligence is probably going to play a role in not probably it will play a role in influencing decisions and in influencing choices so i think as a marketer if i am going to take uh, cognizance of all of this is when you know uh, it, this is going to be the new normal is is when i'm going to reach my so, customer faster so, yes okay so the, some of my learnings you know we we come from experiential industry studies uh, right. experiential marketing industry studies so experiential marketing says there is about five senses works then your sixth right. sense sixth sense actually starts working then that actually helps you to buy uh, i want to understand now the things have been changing and online is actually uh, taking over offline uh, kind of influencing right. what you're saying uh, how effective it would be and what would be the best challenges for a marketer to you know uh, adopt the online process using ai and down the line it has to come to a ground or will it be completely a virtual world see it will never be a, a a complete virtual world let's look at past trends like for instance when uh, we have that very famous song no uh, what is that radio video killed the radio star right so like when when it was all radio and then tv came right so everyone was like oh my god now radio is going to be obsolete and it's just going to be the tv and not just for marketers but even as consumers and as customers everyone thought the radio is just going to go out of its uh you know go out of uh, circulation um so every time a new trend comes there's always that you know that graph which goes upwards and then it kind of plateaus and does not necessarily that we can take the example of the radio the radio is back now and how right so similarly uh, even in digital it's not that uh, it, it's it's going to be a complete virtual world it, it it doesn't work that way it will work uh a combination but like i said it would be uh, the, the percentages of uh, how much virtual and how much non virtual or if you can say how much online and how much offline is what is going to make a difference for instance uh, if i if i would like to take an example of let's say in castrol uh, you know we had our bike mechanics and maybe 10 years prior i would just go to the i would just take my bike and go to the bike mechanics workshop and get my bike repaired uh this need not be the story today and it definitely need not be the story let's say 10 years from now because uh now we have an app where the bike mechanic can remind me uh, when my service is due i have a, a connectivity via that same app where i can tell oh my bike just broke down just tell me which wire just got suspended i can shoot a video so you know it's it's just made life even more better one two for marketers i don't have to now any more wait to make that 10 crore ad and then put again spend some more uh, on the tv uh, and and then kind of put it out in the outdoor holding now i can reach my customer faster my consumers faster it can it can be done you know in a matter of few minutes a few hours so uh, it, it's just uh, happy days for marketing for marketers because oh, wow. we now oh, wow. yeah absolutely because we we now have many more methods and faster methods and not to mention uh, methods and by methods i mean for digit by which we can you know measure the metric for instance again 20 30 years ago if i put up a holding i'm not really sure how many of my customers that day or that month or that quarter bought it because they saw that holding i really don't know the exact numbers i can take a while yes there are certain my metrics but not perfect whereas if i do a digital campaign if i if i send out a wave if i do a you know a hashtag something uh, let's say a hashtag uh, enough of covid something like that so then i know exactly how many customers have reached what is their pulse everything i've got so it's just a uh, uh, you know i think we just it's just getting better 
and artificial intelligence and ai tools all of that just make our life even better because now uh, if i registered i mean as a company if i thought of suresh and i knew that he bought my mango juice uh, i probably did not have the data or i wouldn't probably know how to reach him back now i can reach him now i can influence uh, suresh to tell him you know why not mango why, why buy only mango juice why not buy my watermelon juice also right so you know so artificial intelligence just becomes get another strong enabler and and all of these tools you know and it kind of so it's 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 like a bridge between the company and the customer so it's it's sure. going to make things even better oh that's yeah. you you mean to say it is getting much faster and the reach is also increasing so online and and it is really helping us to monitor our marketing strategies uh, through our intelligence and you know it is also yes. helping uh, what you said to reaching out back to your client you know why not Correct. buy something else so the crm is also helping out you know in this case. yes yes so Absolutely. you think you are looking something very positively about what are the changes that are happening that is what i can see yes absolutely i th- oh, i think it's it's just uh, I, i think uh, so while this while no one kind of uh, no uh, i want to use the right words here uh, while nobody is kind of uh, looking away from the covid uh, from the covid pandemic nobody is i mean it's as serious and it's as uh, you know uh, uh, something that we need to be mindful of for the next few years but at the same time the very crisis has given us a lot of opportunities the very crisis has taught us that you now we can uh, have better life balances not just work it uh, we can we can r- work from locations closer to our house or in our house rather than spend a lot of our 24 hours in traveling we it has given us more opportunities that you know we can reach our customers even better it has given knowledge to customers and uh, not to mention everybody is a lot more safe everybody is a lot more prudent so there is no crazy money and uh, it, all of this again reverses the responsibility back on us businesses or us marketers because now uh, there is not going to be free flowing money right there is not going to be free flowing money from the customer there is not going to be free flow money from our own side from our own pocket sure. system how much we want to spend and how much we want to earn so the value of uh, you know, the, the roi becomes a lot more tighter now and that just makes us work harder and more creative so I think oh, all in all, it's a very yeah. It's, that's nice. That's everything's just going well, to be good. In a good way. Yes. Oh, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yes. Will we? Can we have the next one, please? So, uh, this thing we've done. I believe this is the same question. Yes. So the third, what we're seeing is how should a major and trusted brand or a marketer develop an effective business strategy? when the government has not adopted uniform criteria as to when the business should be reopened okay we are reopening and we are in the verge of getting things a lot of states have actually started but right. what should be the trusted brand strategy because this this marketers the bigger marketers it's more of you know it takes the more of their own brand guidelines you know right so what yes. do you suggest and what should be your thought process on this doctor right right suresh uh, so so there are a lot of actually this question is a very interesting question and there are a lot of aspects to this question so one is um, for now i'm going to uh, you know at least in this particular question i i'm i'm, I'm going to throw my marketing hat off and say that all of us should start thinking of ourselves as business heads that's number one Correct. right yes. so it, it's so uh, there's a lot like it's not going to be working marketing is not going to be working in silos it's it's everyone has to work with each other so everyone's a business head number one okay second uh, the government has not adopted uniform criteria so now this is this that it's beat in india or beat across the world it's based on the uh, you know the current status the markets are opening like i know bangalore is already uh, a lot more functional than how much mumbai has opened and i think delhi is a little be- uh, lagging behind again it's entirely dependent on the case so from that uh you know from that perspective uh, a trusted brand one needs to stay uh, you know true to its core values like i can't suddenly change what i'm standing for for instance uh, uh let me think of an example for instance let's think of schneider okay so schneider is an organization or is a company that that uh, believes in providing smart solutions smart electric solutions now just because there is a pandemic right now they can't uh, switch 
their value to you know not uh, producing the core product and to some other product so i think uh, again here again a lot of uh, play is it will will occur between uh, established players and non established players or uh, not non established but smaller players again what i mean by this is for instance um, let's assume if the government has it opened uh, let me take kone for an example okay for instance uh, the safety and you know traveling in elevators all you know social distancing all of that comes into picture right so now if that's the case how are people going to travel in elevators and escalators so because there is going to be lot of button touching and you know cramped up space so kone has i, mean, I just got to know this yesterday or day before yesterday but kone has has innovated and come up with uh, this new technology where and when he enters the lift he does he has to use his whatsapp and he you know uh, sends a message and he doesn't even have to touch the button he doesn't even have to say anything similarly i think another uh, another elevator organization uh, has voice recognition so as soon as i enter the elevator i just need to say floor 2 or 3 or wherever you right so now this is something that a major brand can afford to do because they have the wherewithal to do right. so even yeah. as governments are taking their time and rightfully so uh you know in the in the in the large interest of public if they are taking their time uh, technology or innovative ideas is something that the bigger brands can invest in uh, so that's point number 1 point number 2 is what they stand for for instance again let me go back to kone example they known for innovation they've got uh, so many awards on innovation i mean for innovation across uh, all of the decades that they are in, in you know in business so does the pandemic stop them from uh, being innovative and you know you know just to uh, you know get panic key try and sell more elevators or try and you know uh, spend more money on maintenance of elevators no they are still continuing on the path of innovative and they've been the first movers so i think uh, for major brands the ability to first whatever is that the value that they're standing for if they're innovative then they're innovative if they're empathetic then they stay empathetic and second being able to adapt and being able to be creative to come up with those solutions is something you know uh, regardless of how much the, how much time the government takes to uh, open up will still you know kind of play the game so this of course is for the major players this is for the larger players i wouldn't say major larger players is what i would say uh for as for the smaller players uh, again this is time for innovation like i think we've all seen uh, or heard of examples in the recent past where uh, you know somebody uh, started you know uh, so so friend friend of mine uh, he was a uh, you know uh, you know that called medical uh, ph- pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, company and uh, so they were into just producing drugs and during this pandemic they said okay the need of the hour is for us to kind of uh, you know upscale or uh, rather not upscale to diversify so now they are not just selling tablets uh, as in the usual drugs but they are also you know manufacturing sanitizers and uh, ventilators and things like that so i think the the small so each of them have their own advantage the small, for the smaller players it's easier to be flexible it's easier to come up with new products for the larger player because you have the the resources you are able to kind of uh, you know move things and come up with larger innovations so it works it's so it's, so, it's i mean we really so, aiming like you know it's not open so let's not do it so what kind of a percentage you see that uh, marketers are adopting ai in their marketing plans because uh, of the so many reasons now we're adopting the you know digital front of innovations if you see uh, what right. i'm seeing is there lot of ai is coming in the picture the artificial right. intelligence playing a right. you know, bigger role now you know yes what you said is you know the kind of bigger marketers can actually adopt in investing in research but how well uh, you know uh, smaller companies also can uh, what kind of innovations they can do when they cannot invest in ai and all that to getting their more effective manner right so it's not like uh, so it's not like the world did not exist before artificial Correct. intelligence came into being right and it's not like like we there's uh, did not exist or not just marketers it's not like businesses did not exist uh, at the end of the day uh, ai technology all of those to whichever new trend that might come let's say 20 years from now when you and i have hung up our boots all of them are enablers okay so at the core of it marketing stays marketing or businesses stay core to what uh, you know they they started off with so what i mean by that is in a smaller organization if they do not have the resources currently 
or in the near future to invest in AI and these kind of tools, what they can definitely do is uh, go to the customer themselves, right? A potential customer or uh, uh, an existing customer, um, or you can always check out competition's customer, right? So for instance, if I am a person, um, if I have a business uh, that's making pens, let's just assume, right? And okay, I'm going to give you a very dark example right now. So supposing if, if I'm an organization, that a smaller organization that, that, that manufactures pens, and suddenly there's a pandemic, and then I realize that I'm trying to kind of sell pens in this particular city, but it's not getting sold, and I'm checking my competition, and it's not getting sold. And then I don't need artificial intelligence. I just need to send my team to the, or I just myself go to the market, uh, go, and then kind of realize that, okay, pens are not being sold over here because nobody has a hand in this village or in this city. So how are they going to, you know, you utilize the pen? That's why I said it's a dark thing. So, the, but I don't need an artificial, I don't need artificial intelligence kind of tools for this. I just need to walk into the city and see, oh my God, all my customers or potential customers don't have hands. So how are they going to use the pen? So then I come back and I say, okay, maybe then pen side pay, but then maybe what we can do is you know get those hands made you know probably get into the business of so diversify my business maybe kind of uh, get into the business where i'm manufacturing those artificial hands right so now this is a very uh, hypothetical example that i'm giving but it's very relevant because if you uh, if you read up on samsung uh, which is an organization south korean organization which started in 1938 they're exactly the same thing. I mean, they started off, I mean, today we know Samsung as technology and mobiles and everything else, but when they started off, they were uh, you know, into, into food and textiles and multiple other industries because they were so flexible and obviously they started small and today they're such a huge conglomerate, right? So the ability for uh, smaller organizations who cannot invest in, let's say, BI tools or AI tools, uh, this, the solution for them is to be flexible. In, in terms of product, in terms of product story, in terms of who is the customer they are targeting. Maybe not that city which has all people without hands. Maybe the next city where people have hands and they can use the pens, right? So all of these things come into the play. So uh, it, it can't be like a one single, you know, brush stroke or a single paint. It, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, you have to kind of, it, it's not like, okay, give me a formula. I'm going to start a company tomorrow. And one, two, three, this, it doesn't work like that. It's, you always have to take everything into consideration. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so, would we can we go to the second next slide, please? So, this is what a lot of AI is playing these days. Yeah, so that is what now you're seeing. Uh, you know, diversify. Yeah, I think we answered this question. Yes, we answered. That this is question. what we we just talking about. Yeah, so this yes. is. The, so how to deal with the competitive landscape when consumers' spending habits are fundamentally altered? Of course, the habits have changed. There are a lot of changes that are happening. So how do you see this the right. with the competitive landscape? Yeah. Very nice. So, um, so I'm just thinking that uh, if, if the consumer's spending habits is altered, it's altered not just for me, right? It's altered for all my consumers, right? Like... For instance, if I am a TV manufacturing company, let's say I'm Onida and somebody else is Samsung and somebody else is Sony. So if consumer spending habits uh, over the last one year or over the over the next one year is going to change, it's change, it's going to change all of us as an industry. Uh, similarly, in automotive industry, if, if the crude oil prices were falling and the industry was in a slack, it was for all the players. It was not only for me. So that is something that as business owners or as uh, marketers, we need to be innocent of. And that's a good space to be in, number one. Number two, uh, uh, the, the, nevertheless, people are still buying, right? It's not like they're not going to buy. Like I, like I said in another thing, like ultimately, we're all creatures of habit, right? So while temporarily, not temporarily, while there is a uh, current thing of, okay, I'm going to be a little more prudent, I'm going to be safer, I'm going to be maintaining social distance, I'm going to be good with my money as a consumer. But ultimately, I am probably going to go back to, you know, if I'm a consumer who wants to keep changing my mobile phone every one, six, one and six months, I am going to go back to that, right? So nevertheless, businesses have to thrive in this kind of a scenario. So when businesses are thriving and all of us are fighting for the same reduced consumer amount of money, if you're taking all the consumers, let's assume 200 TV buyers, now has become 100 TV buyers. So now 
and five players are in the market. All those five players are competing for those hundred players. So in that context, uh, why is my Sony TV better than let's say a Samsung or something else? Is the product value proposition that I kind of you know convey to my consumers? That is, what is my product standing for? What is the benefit my customer my product will give you? And why should you buy this? Pricing, you know, whether it's good, it's bad, or it's worth, or it's you know, uh, uh, value for the money. So you know, the what, the why, and the how is what is going to make the distinction. Uh, it is also going to make the, uh, it's also going to be the influencing factor for the buying, the buying decisions, right? So uh, it's 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 not really that it's a grim situation. It is actually a situation where uh, we just be a lot more wiser in communicating to our customers. Let me give you an example again here. For instance, in Castrol, when, uh, you know, so so we have a lot of business partners, Castrol business partners, right? So we, we realized that we were investing a lot of money, a lot of resources, in not just money, but resources into training, all of them, uh, all of that into uh, my business franchise partners. But ultimately they were selling competitive oil. And for the longest time, we did all the research in the market and we never found out why. And after, very, very detailed research. And by research, I don't mean only, you know, the marketing research agencies going to the field and doing it, but us marketers, the supply chain guys, the sales guys, you know, with a year to the ground, basically, we realized that it's not that they don't value the amount of investments. Like we're, we're investing lakhs and crores into their businesses. It's not like they don't value it. It's just that they don't understand it, right? They don't understand that, okay, uh, you know, this is more value for money rather than me selling the competition oil. So once we realized and we kind of, you know, it was like one Eureka moment that, you know, after like three years, we finally like, you know, okay, this is the problem is that is then when we said, okay, this year, we're not going to be wasting our money on promotions and, uh, you know, giving out discounts, but rather we're going to spend money and energy resources on educating these guys, our, our business franchise partners into understanding what is the value of continuing to stay associated with Castro. That's now the same thing. Now this is in the case of Castrol and business partners, but the same thing can be extrapolated to me and the consumer. Similar thought process. So, so it is like, like, if like, juice, like if you're buying my mango juice, why is it good for you? Okay. If you know okay, that, so, and if you know, mm, yeah. If you know right. that, then you will definitely buy. Yes. So it is more of involving your other, uh, you know, stakeholders also in the business and involving them to revive completely because. Uh, you know, the market is actually shrinking towards the altered habits. So the market right. actually shrink. So uh, okay. we also working on to elaborate about that market size. That should be the marketing plan also. Like, like you know, if you want to do that, what should be a marketer yes. will plan to elaborate about that horizon of the market uh, size to increase? Uh, I didn't get your question. Can you just... Uh... So when you said there is about thousand people buying a product, maybe altered yeah. habits will reduce it to about 500. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a marketer must be, uh, there are about five competitors is actually targeting the 500 people. Also, right. they must be focusing on other 500 people also to join this team. Right. Yes. Yes, so absolutely. Yes. What can be, what can be a marketer, uh, think of, you know, activating any kind of marketing plans, like, you know, what, what should be the strategy for that? Yes. So that's a, a, again, now this is like, these are two different lenses. Yeah. One is what do you do with the existing customers that you have, right? So that you want them to keep buying. And then again, it also belongs, it, it also depends on the uh, industry you belong to. For instance, I'm not going to buy a car every year, right? I'm going to buy a car once in two years, but I'm probably going to buy a shirt every one, every, every second month, I'm going to probably buy a new shirt. So it also depends on the industry that you're in to begin with, you know, let's have that disclaimer right on top. Second, uh, I mean, after the disclaimer, what we need to also realize is that there are two lenses here. One is what you do with the existing customers. How do you get them to buy? Uh, and how do you get them to buy more? How do you get them to buy other products in your range? That's one part of it. The second is, okay, we've lost 500. So can we get new 500? Or can we reach back to these lost 500? So there are two different, uh, uh, you would say two different fields, you know, and the strategy has to be developed differently for this and strategy has to be developed differently for the new customer acquisition. So for the new customer acquisition, you have to start all over again. 
because these people are already on your customer life cycle they already know your product like suresh you already know my mango juice right so you already know it's good for your health you already know it's sweet and it's nice and it makes you energized you know oh you already know that but now if i have to get let's say gopal and gopal has no idea of my mango juice so i have to start gopal on the track all over again i have to start telling him hello you know i have something called a mango juice and then we start today. so it's it's it while one lens is that these two people as in the new customer and the old customer are separate entities the other way of looking at the same thing is that they are actually same customer at different stages of the life cycle customer life cycle so how you treat each of them is what makes all the difference right okay. so so how you okay. relate to them yeah so we have a, we have a very uh, nice uh, question uh, we would like to take up from somel so if it is a business for shut it's, it's a hotel business a restaurant business for about 3 months be shut okay nice. say for and now it is opening up and is there any checklist of steps that they can follow on digital to announce it that they are back and they are also taking precautions nice. like so, what should um, be what should be the strategy for that that is what is a saumil's question yeah please yeah it's it's a very uh, it's a very uh, practical question so for instance i think we already have a lot of uh the restaurant and a lot of and i can give you multiple examples on this huh? um we already have a lot of examples people who are already uh, some of them are business leaders some of them are not such business leaders but let me give you examples okay so and the checklist boss you have to develop it on your own that goes without saying because you know your you know whether you are a, a shiv shanti sagar kind of shiv sagar kind of a restaurant i mean a hotel or if you are a marriott kind of a thing so you know your business best so the checklist will you know be varied across uh, the parameters that you have in your business that said some really good things to do uh, for instance uh, swiggy okay so swiggy and zomato both of them are now kind of reaching out to me as a customer and letting me know that the packaging is safer the packaging is better that's one now he's an established these two are established guys right second is uh, so so there is this friend of mine who is the ceo of uh, just Del- just deliveries so she basically they deliver uh, on time cakes and other uh, bakery products across the city of mumbai now uh, and, and for in, in the case of cakes what is important is refrigerating and you know keeping the the pastries at the right temperature is very important now as a good practice she was already already doing it she was already doing this for the last 5 6 years of her business but now uh she especially in these because of this current pandemic and everything that's come out of it since her business has shut down and now she has to restart she will start with the communication you know she, she is going to start with this communication saying that we you know we take precautions to you know keep our food in place and the the right temperature the right amount of time taken to deliver from spot a to spot b so basically one is doing the correct thing which is in, in terms of safety hygiene health second is letting your customers know in so that you know that when you are doing all of these things you know that's important because only then is trust built like if if i swore off swiggy and i swore off zomato and i swore off like you know i'm never going to eat outside food but now if one person one of the restaurants reaches out to me and says okay guess what we understand that you're not going to part but you know one uh, all our methods are safe and probably you know you can come and visit our kitchen and you know see uh, how we're doing food second we'll come and deliver to you and you know whatever so that again depends on whether it is a particular restaurant that i'm talking about the third thing is honesty uh, and and i'd like to give a really nice example you know and i gave this example in another webinar also that uh, spa hospitality which is basically uh, yuacha group of hotels uh, so they had one of their employees very recently who uh, tested positive so i mean it was just one employee you know so they need to tell me as a patron they didn't need to tell me or any of the any of us any of the other patrons but the ceo went out of her way and she you know she penned a note on the public forum on 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 the internet saying that you know we have this one employee who's tested positive and we'd like to yeah, yeah. hence and, and you know and we will get back to you when we open so i think for a for a restaurant business or for a hotel business which has shut down temporarily for, for the last 3 months uh, you know doing all these checklists one you yourself being safe and doing doing these things second informing your customers and your patrons and your clients that you are doing all of these things and third slowly easing them back and giving them the trust to kind of come back now these are the broad headlines under this what you want to do is totally dependent on your business but Correct. these are the three so honesty is very important i think this is the bandra case uh, bkc the restaurant that's that was really touched that hearts beautiful 
Absolutely. Yes, it was beautiful. It was very, very nice. They didn't need to do it. They did not need to do it at all. But they did it. And and uh, and and I think uh, so. The other thing is also the the just deliveries example that I gave you. She's always been doing. The CEO has already always been taking care of the you know the safety and the health and the temperature and she's always been doing it. She's been you know that's why she's you know in the business. But now that uh, this has come up, now she lets us know about it. So now I I don't have two thoughts about whether I should order a cake with her or not. So there is something very beautiful. Uh, I am talking about one of the app which is called MyGate. I hope you people have, have might have heard about it. MyGate. They also. Yeah. Sell. So uh, they have huge inventory to advertise on their own application form. Okay. But okay. Uh, but the thing is, what clearly they mentioned about in this, they did. They have not entertained any kind of you know media is actually trying to advertise. or maybe somebody is actually going towards the packaging while it they are delivering so such kind of ethics right. actually creating the marketing is much easy uh, that is yes. what uh, this covid uh, teaching us the honesty actually playing a very bigger role uh, right. likewise okay. ai what we seeing the honesty actually coming in a very important role in any marketing activities so that's what we seeing the lot of marketing marketing campaigns also what we seeing so this emotion right. called honesty is used and properly they are actually highlighting as one of the strategy in lot of marketplaces what we see right and i think and i think that that tugs at the core human values <coughs> also right like for instance True. it's not necessarily only i mean even as as a human being so rishu and i are friends for so many years now you would rather have <coughs> me honest and uh, you know uh, up front with you rather than me pretending to be honest with you right or rather than me marketing myself to be honest with you so what works for the human also works in marketing absolutely all yeah. right that's great would we can we quickly go for the next one please so uh, the next one is how will brands think, promote the product i think this is supposed we have done it right so health and safety we've done this we've done this yeah yeah So, what is the most effective is, way of strategic most... marketing in the regarding gain and customer loyalty? Just the honesty. Uh, yeah. So, I think it? again, uh, yeah. This this question, I think, uh, I think we've, we've pretty much answered it in 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 bits and pieces. But yeah, kind of yeah. putting it all back yeah. together. Uh, yeah. It one again, it depends on uh, what kind of business you are in, right? For instance, uh, like I said, sometime back, I'm not going to buy a car every year. I'm going to buy a car, uh, you know, probably once in two years, once in three years. So does that mean that the car makers of the world, like uh, like whoever, like Maruti or Audi or any of them, uh, just sell one year and then do nothing with their customers? No. There is also the fact that there is a maintenance that is associated with the car, right? Correct. So uh, customer Correct. loyalty comes when. Uh, you know when when the customer sees value in associating with the brand for instance uh, like also the same, the same example that i gave you about castrol also where we made our business partners realize the value of why we are associated with them so i think you the the, the ultimate uh, would you say progress card you know you're getting an a plus on your progress card is when your customer becomes your brand advocate when he starts speaking about your product or your brand is when you know you've got a plus okay that said how do you kind of do it now what is the most effective way again like i said it's not a single formula that you can you can just apply across all brands all industries all business sizes but definitely what you can do is what planning i think makes a whole a uh, huge difference so for instance where do i see myself and this is regardless this is regardless of whether i'm a startup or an established uh, organization brand. company or okay. uh, where do i see myself one year from now where do i see myself two years three years five years from now at least some broad planning and here we have the economy in uh, in, in question we have the government regulations we have what is a competition we have what is a global scenario what is the economic scenario we have you know what pricing you know is is market going up is market going down so based on that can i uh, increase can i uh, you know kind of rework my pricing strategy so all of these things kind of come into play so strategy marketing is never done for three three months or it's never done for a quarter strategic marketing is always done for a longer period of time so when you do so a I, longer period of time so all of these things when you kind of add up invariably you are your ultimate goal is customer loyalty because 
be it whether old customers existing customers or be it whether new customers you want them to stay in the customer life cycle so you're going to do everything uh, you know with regards to that so there's not so, going to be like a single yeah, yeah. so there is Sorry. a uh, new requirement came in which we are working on now i would love to share it so this is something the loyalty there is an automobile uh, the automobile company it's completely not for sale what they are doing hmm. is they are completely focusing on the loyalty thing by okay. sanitizing their cars before the lockdown on lockdown very nice so they want to go for all the cars they just want to sanitize and before you using it you just come to us we will come to your home and sanitize your car and we'll just wash and clean the car so that is actually motivating right. client for the you know loyalty based kind of a, a program what you know this kind of automobile so it's nothing to do with the sale or something but yes right the strategy will create more of you know the coming back to uh, the same brand kind of a client you know yeah i uh, now that you say that i'm reminded of another example that we did like uh, for instance in aditya birla we were in insurance and we all know how what is our reaction as a customer to insurance calls and insurance product as per se right so uh, we realized after a lot of research that you know it it i don't think like the moment uh, no matter how well i'm dressed no matter how much i know my product portfolio and everything and no matter how much i put fear into the person saying that sir aap ab mar jaoge to aapki biwi ke liye insurance le lo type ya aapke maa ke liye insurance le lo type uh, we realized that this this uh, it doesn't work you know i mean it worked for so many in year not going to continue working so that's when we realized okay uh, forget selling insurance let's first get our customers aligned with other tabla so what we did was we started associating ourselves with rotary uh, the rotary club the lions club um going to societies large housing societies where uh, you know we interact very closely with them and no where mentioning about insurance or you know ultimately we're going to sell insurance no nothing like that only going there and saying what we can do for you so certain societies said you know we would like your help in probably organizing the independence day kind of a thing certain societies said you know we'd like your help in probably getting the waste management system uh, you know uh, uh, set up in our building certain societies said uh, we would like your help for setting up a blood donation drive so you know and then so basically what as as businesses or as marketers what we were doing or what we were saying is first let's empathize if we empathize with our customers our customers will reverse empathize with us because then it's a win win situation right so uh, so i, I he's, he's not going to be like put up oh aage insurance bechne you know it's not like that but it's it's actually that you know oh here is you know this is a solution provider this aditya birla we if we have a problem we can go to this person and they'll give us a solution however it is i mean however that they want to kind of do it so uh, so after nurturing a, a, a client or a potential client after nurturing then when they you know we have built their trust and we have won their trust is when we kind of then put the product we do you want insurance you know that kind of a thing so uh, it's very similar to the example that you just quoted Absolutely. about the sanitizing vehicles thing and it so, works i mean it works so there is there is in a tradition way we have uh, you know different kind of a formats uh, one is digitally ai we talked about which is coming in a role yes. in the new marketing strategies then we talked about a honesty now we are talking yes. about loyalty so yes. covid is actually treating us going back to our traditions and basics but yes coming with a much more effective manner strategies that is what the new learning sir that yes, is that I, is I, fantastic yeah i i think like i i wouldn't kind of want to also yeah it's a nice way of putting it but there's another there's a uh, you know a clause over there like a, like a corollary over there like i wouldn't want to kind of tell myself that you know a disaster is what brought me back to my uh, roots <laughs> i don't want to kind of put it that way no. also i would like to yeah yeah so fact is company, fact with a lot of learnings yeah. yes absolutely because i think the the, the the companies that have gone from being startups like samsung to you know large companies or any other these are companies companies that have in their own journey been very honest with their customers right whether they diversified they didn't diversify they had a doom and then they rose up whatever the scenario is like nokia is a very beautiful example they you know they were rising and then they fell and then now they were slowly rising again so whichever organization i think the the, the difference between the people who win and the people who don't win are people who are honest people who stay core to their product who stay core all of that is what anyway it makes a difference and i don't want to give, kind of give all the credit to corona i really don't want to Absolutely. do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. urbi can we go to this next one do we have more questions okay 
we're done. Yeah, this way done. Customer loyalty is something very important. Yeah. So, how has sustainability marketing been defined and the practice by leading organization brands, marketers? I think we answered this. I think uh, we, we kind of answered yeah. this. Yeah. How do I kind of sustain myself? What is what are all the various things that I need to put in? Since I'll give you an example, let's let me just touch upon that question. For, for instance, uh, if I, if I was a diesel car manufacturer and uh, everything is working fine and you know everything is in, in my and I'm making lots of profit, but then uh, environmentalist and we've all realized that you know the environment is getting spoiled because of the diesel cars or because of the petrol cars. And now there is a need to manufacture electric vehicles or now there is a need to manufacture petrol vehicles. I'm just saying in the life cycle. Then I think factoring this in, factoring the environment, factoring, so the, it could be anything for like for the example that I gave, and environment is, 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 uh, is uh, the, you know, the green environment and all of that is a factor. But in some, in, in any other example, it could be something else. Let's say pricing. In another business, it could be sudden, uh, like in a hotel business, it could just be probably the hotel, the food industry business has been affected the most during the COVID. You know, you know, compared to all other industries. So it depends on which factor in my PNL or in my uh, strategy map that I have done over, let's say, three years, five years, which parameter I need to revisit. Uh, and and when I revisit, what do I kind of replace it with? Uh, and, and then thereby make the numbers come is what is going to make all the difference so for sustainability. Uh, uh, yeah. Can we go to the next one? So what are the challenges and how can strategic marketing can help the small, medium-sized business face giant companies when you actually compete, of course. If I'm selling yes. sunglasses in a hard in a kiosk and there is a sunglass hut in the, in the shopping center. So how right. strategic marketing can help because everybody has yes, their own absolutely. teaching. So. Yes, I think I think you already started answering that question with the word uh, with the use of the word teaching, uh, the target segment basically. Uh, so I so there's a place and role for everybody in under the sun. I think that's that's to begin with number one. Number two, uh, if I'm a small sized company, my competition is not directly the large sized company. Does not mean to say that I should not compete or I should not aspire, I should not ambish, be ambitious. That's not what I'm saying. But at least in the near future, my immediate competition is like if I'm going to start uh, uh, building computers and it's Dr. Anvita computers, uh, my direct competition is not going to be Microsoft or some other company. My direct competition is going to be local players around me. So I think this is something that, first of all, as, as uh, because the question is a very leading question, you know. So we have to break that down. So we, we should kind of just say that. First of all, I understand what is in my current environment. It's like, pehle na, okay. Mumbai mein dekho kya hai, <laughs> fir India mein dekho, fir US mein dekho. So that that is one point number one. Point number two, uh, nevertheless, does a small organization require strategic marketing, or, or it does not require, and only the large? No, I think every organization, every business tomorrow, if I start baking at home. Uh, even even somebody like me who bakes at home also, I will also have to have a strategy. Only I may not call it such big, big words like strategic marketing and all, but uh, means I would not use the nomenclatures or the vocabulary for it, but nevertheless, I'm doing the same thing. So for instance, today, if I'm baking cake uh, in, in my building, so I ensure that my neighbors know about it, then I ensure that my neighbors order from me, then I ensure that my relatives order from from me. Then I ensure that, okay, I start putting up a few WhatsApp messages saying that, you know, these are some of the uh, cakes that I baked and this is some of the feedback. And then I uh, kind of start selling a little more. And then I know I've, I've done a very good job when now other people are recommending me. Now that's one level. Now, I, now till this point, I have reached, you know, the penultimate of my uh, small baker or home baker category. Now, beyond this, if I have the wherewithal to kind of get in more uh, staff and things like that, and I have more resources, then I start competing with the Theo Brahmas and the Monjinis of the world. Now I have stepped up. So now I'm no more a small baker. Now I'm a medium-sized baker. And then I'm a... So, so, I, so the whole idea is, you can do it in multiple ways. The whole idea is if I'm going to be starting a business today, or if I'm already in business today and I'm a small or a medium-sized baker, so where is it, the correct evaluation of where is it, where am I right now? Where do I want to go from here? And the breaks in between, as in the breaks as in, this is not breaks, milestones in between is what I need to kind of peg. And then so that has to take into <laughs> So there is a very yes. small tricky question out here. Okay. So yes. I'm a very small vendor. Uh, I sell vegetables. I sell, you know, some essentials like dal chawal and all that. 
I have a small shop. Hmm. Okay. I hmm. surroundingly, okay. you know, about two kilometers, I do free delivery. That right. is what is my business so far. I have a small okay. shop, which is about 200 square feet. And I'm running it last five years. Now when right. I'm seeing, even though milk, even though dal, even though chawal is delivered by Amazon. Okay. So that's a big fish. So how right. do I see this? How do I see this? And what do you actually suggest to such kind of brands also, or maybe to survive? So they also need to do something about it. So it is, I'm, right. I'm giving a very basic, basic example. Because no, no, if you see, good, uh, it's a very good question. Yes. Uh, no, you also launched. Uh, yeah. You know, Did you say Reliance? Yeah. Geo also launched Geo. Geo, Geo. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Yeah. So I think the simple answer, and I don't think I need to say anything more. The simple answer is, Look at the uh, uh, look at the ocean. If you look at the ocean and the, the sea life in that, you have the sharks, you have the small fish, you have the whales, you have the dolphins, you have the crabs, you have the crustaceans. Everybody, while the shark does eat smaller fish, it doesn't mean that the fish is going to the smaller fish are going to get finished. They, everyone has a role and everyone has a place, and I think that is self-explanatory. So if uh, the very question that you asked that, you know, you are the bhaji wala, you're the vegetable wala and you know, Amazon has come and taken it. If that was uh, the case, then we wouldn't have our local uh, vegetable wala surviving anymore. And I'm not talking right now with reference to the Corona thing, but I'm just saying uh, in general, because Amazon has been in, in existence for quite some time now, right? So if, if the bigger guys had to kind of come and, uh, you know, eat up the smaller guys, then, uh, you know, we really wouldn't uh, be even having this conversation. The very fact that there's role and time and place for everyone uh, is proven by the fact that, you know, in not just vegetable fruit market or dal makni market, but also even in clothes, you have the Zara's and you have the, man, uh, you know, whatever brands of the world, Reebok and Adidas, but you still have the local guy also selling his, you know, clothes and salwar kameez and things like that. So I'm saying that, uh, you know, the, the question that we just took that, you know, how should the smaller guys practically right. save themselves from the larger guy. Right. You don't have to save yourself. You just have to sustain yourself. You can first you sustain yourself. Like, you know, build your house properly. Make don't don't worry that you know the your neighbor's house will come and eat you up. No, he is in his space, you're in your space. So build your foundation first. Then you can start adding floors and terraces and things like that and and maybe make a bigger house than your neighbor. So. That's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Urbi, can we go next quickly? Or is it the last one? The last one? I think we've answered this uh, we've, by we've honesty, by reaching out to the customer. Yeah, we've done this. Okay, I think this is the final Same question. Brand when... We've done this also. I think this is the final, final question. I think, I suppose. think uh, it's pretty much We have more question. or less covered all the points. That's a great thing. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> that's a that's a great uh, quick questions and answers. Thank you, uh, Doctor. You yeah, it was <clears throat> yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, we have I, questions. Yeah, please. Uh, if anyone want to ask any kind of new strategies, ask me anything. Types Doc is here with us. Any kind of questions you would like to learn and uh, understand more from a marketer perspective, or maybe study in you know perspective to learn. Any questions, if you want to right. put across, you can put across, please. We, we, your questions are more welcome. Most welcome. Thank you, Somal. Okay, Kunal uh, has a question. Yeah, please. Kunal, uh, you can, uh, we can unmute you. You can, you can, you can ask the question. Hi, Kunal. Hi, 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 Dr. Anvata. Okay, I Kunal, uh, you. Hi, Kunal. Are you, are you able to hear me? Yes, Kunal. Yes. So I heard you. It was a great session, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Maybe how uh, I just had some a question in mind as to, uh, you know, so COVID will bring about a change in consumer behavior to a lot of extent, you know, across all products, across all industries. Right. right? So it's going to change the way in which uh, I buy things or, you know, it will influence a lot, you know, my buying decisions post COVID. Right. Also, at the same time, brands have a lot of changes in their, uh, you know, models and, you know, the way in which they are going to bring out their offering to customers post-COVID. So, right. 
from a media perspective as in you know what do you feel is going to be uh, the change in the communication strategy for brands i mean are the spends going to increase you know is the is this 2 3 months lag going to reduce the spendings you know at the brands end so how will the overall media pie get affected right it's it's a uh, yeah it's a nice question for now so uh it's like a chicken egg thing because it it's like yeah the consumers are definitely going to spend less uh so because they're going to spend lesser so i want to reach them more so that they spend more right so because and if i want to reach them more then maybe my media spends will increase right but then is it as soon i just said no not necessarily because it also depends on my media spending where i spend them so supposing i go on tv then it's going to be crazy amount of spending but if i go a mix of tv and let's say digital which is a lot more cheaper and more effective then maybe i'm getting a better value for my money that i'm spending okay so that's one the second thing is uh, like i said sometime back that ultimately after 5 months after a year after 2 years we are all creatures of habit like for instance if i'm a person who likes to change my mobile phone every year then maybe now mobile is a luxury as in the mobile uh, category will fall under let's say a discretionary thing but uh, it's not an essential like food is essential but this is mobile is not going to be but after 2 years i'm definitely going to go back to my habit so you know this is something that brands need to be cognizant of so it's uh, probably in the short term uh the media spend decrease or increase i am not even saying that it will decrease because if i have to communicate more maybe my media spend will increase so again now that is dependent on the business that you are in uh so like for instance the established brands probably don't need to spend as much mid mid range brands probably need to spend a little more so uh, you know so it's it's a, it's a very beautiful play it's it's more like uh, did the chicken hatch the egg or did the egg hatch the chicken and can we do both you know can we you know can we get the chicken to hatch more or you know or can we get the eggs to hatch out fast and have more chickens things like that so so basically they will drive each other so maybe in the short term uh, the media spend might be a little lesser but when you say long term like one year two years three years we're going to be everything is going to kind of even out so yeah um, what is the good point of this is that it's probably going to be better and more uh, efficient in media spending i think that's the thing that i would like to say rather than just more media spends i would say efficient media spend yeah true thanks uh, did i answer your question yeah yeah i guess the the last one which you said it's more efficient media spend that that's like the most apt thing okay thanks sir thanks uh, uh doctor we have uh, shashank upadhyay he has okay. question shashank please go okay. ahead Yeah, hi doctor Ranvita, this is Shashank hi, here. Shashank. Yeah. yeah, I'm currently working in Luxembourg. Uh so like uh, I wanted to know in this pandemic situation uh how to like you know market your product or ex- like develop your business to India from international market. Do you have any views on it? Uh it depends on uh that's a good question. Uh, because uh, say, normally yeah. like you know like if you want to like you know if you want an indian company like you know to come or invest abroad you need to go yeah. go to them like you know you need to show your presentations you need to approach them in personal but right. like as of 2020 all the meetings and like everything is cancelled but you right. know like it's very difficult uh, for like us like for people to believe like if you just do a webinar or if you just give them an online presentation and tell them to invest so what's your view on it and how to proceed right uh, so as you talk it just it just dawned upon me that uh, it's it's webinar and uh, the virtual way of meeting and virtual way of striking deals is probably going to be the way forward right so like like the very fact that you're calling in from from lakhpur and talking to us itself has become a, become the normal now right it's become the norm so while in the past uh, and when i say past I, i'm just referring to 3 months ago while in the past it probably required uh, companies that you know had to travel uh, executives from the company if they were an indian company and wanted to set up base in let's say japan so the indian executives had to travel to japan maybe that's it's a that's a good thing maybe we don't need to do it anymore maybe we kind of everything can be done on you know webinars and uh, you know deals uh, virtual deals and uh, this thing so Uh, a lot more so what does a company need to do if it wants to expand its market i think first of all uh, it depends on again like i'm repeatedly saying that it depends on which uh, 
what product that you're selling and how big your company is and things like that. And what is the product you're selling? But the second thing is, and what will facilitate this is the technology. So a lot more investment. So all the monies that you will save on uh, the executives traveling will now be kind of redirected to technology investments. So, you know, you would have uh, better uh, methods of kind of showcasing your product, uh, better uh, presentations, better uh, 3D imaging of your products, things like that, right? So, uh, you know, the <coughs> communication still stays the same, the communication stays. Uh, and that will enable your negotiations and tracking. So, it. I just... That is one thing. Yes, I just Kirish? like to add here, uh, Shashank. Yeah. So we have similar kind of uh, proposals are happening and uh, people are really concerned until then you meet personally or uh, locally present. So it is not possible. But yes, uh, there are a lot of alliances and associations and integrations are happening. Supposedly, yeah. uh, uh, we are working for uh, some of the Canadian companies to you know represent them in India. So certain kind of alliances uh, you should be looking for because an alliances can only uh, represent you very well and can speak your own language out here in person. So that is one because of the so many restrictions from different countries as of now. So that is mm. one point I can suggest you to do more of alliances part and then you take it up to different countries, any country if you're talking about, not just India. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's absolutely right. And there's there's another aspect also. I think when you kind of, uh, I mean, that's adding to your point, Suresh. Like not just alliances. I think the moment you want to kind of go from your existing market to a new market, I think the first thing that you need to understand is uh, what is that market like? You know, what is that? What is the culture of that market? What what is the kind of people? What drives them? What are their aspirations? All of these things. And and this is true again. Like, like I'm saying, it's true even before Corona and even after Corona. So uh, the only difference is again. Uh, the platform so you need to know your customer you need to know like i don't know if you heard this example when we the dark example that i gave some time back when i'm a pen manufacturer but if i go to a city without with people without hands you know uh, so I, I need to know that you know before i enter that market i need to know whether the people in that city have hands or not where they can hold the pen so knowing my customer the, of the new market and uh, who are the existing uh, competition over there uh, is my product going to be a new product completely new product and I'm going to be the first player or are there already uh, existing players and I'm just going to be the new Luxembourg guy, you know, so all of these things, I think uh, a lot of pre-launch, not launch, but pre, uh, pre, yeah, pre-launch is the right word. So pre-launch research has to be done before you kind of just go ahead. And then uh, investment in technology in terms of, you know, now it's become the norm, Shashank. I mean, that goes without saying. It has become the norm now. Now, the very fact that you and I and Sudhakar are talking itself is proof of the fact that this is going to be the way forward. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Thank you for your insights. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Somil Shah. Uh, he's available. Somil? Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Uh, See, Somil. So, um, yeah. Hi. Hi. So, my question is. Um, uh, is there anything which we can do on ORM front? What because uh, this are uh, really uh, 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 the crisis situation, and if somebody by mistakes or even like purposely tweets about your business saying it's not the place to go, uh, there was an infection in that area, or I don't know how how brand should you know respond to such kind of things, or should we we be proactive in such cases, or uh, I don't know if you can just. Uh, throw some light on it. Like say an airline, um, if somebody okay. just tweeted that it was not safe for I didn't find any hygiene standards in those airlines. Right. That is a crisis situation for that brand. Right. Like, uh, even uh, yeah. Yes. So what what should be the steps for them? You know, uh, we were just having a discussion, couple of us on the same on very similar lines. Uh, see, there's there's always. There's something called face saving and there is something called ass saving. Pardon my language, but if your ass is on fire, yeah. you have to first save your ass. Okay. What I mean by that is if uh, I not save your face at that point of time, what I mean by that is supposing I have, let's assume I'm an airlines uh, yeah. company. I think I'm taking the same example that you gave mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, somebody did not find, and we've, we've opened up airlines, let's say two months mm -hmm. from now or three months from now. And somebody found something unhygienic or somebody found something uh, unsafe and they tweeted about it. I think as a responsible company, my first responsibility is not to handle the tweet 
uh, this thing of course that comes into play but the thing is to go back and actually resolve the problem is there merit in what the gentleman complained about is is, is was was there a scenario where my uh, you know cabin crew did do something unsafe or unhygienic i think that when you resolve the problem then kind of uh, go to handle the twitter because handling the twitter and giving them jawab and you know that is all uh, face same but as saving is yeah. when you are actually you know taking care of the problem first and then and then it goes without saying right that when you correct the problem uh, and probably offer and and this is in scenario where it's a genuine problem if there's no, yeah. not a genuine problem then it's a different scenario but where if there is a genuine problem when you solve that problem and then you know a kind of give back the uh, solution or give back the corrected solution then uh, the very person the very person who the very customer who tweeted angrily about you is going to tweet good about you right then you don't need to really something image management is secondary problem correction is first okay thank you did i answer your question yeah, so yeah that was great that was great so uh, this was actually we are facing something similar hence it oh, was okay. really helpful thank you yeah yes that's wonderful any more questions from anybody any more i guess we've answered too many questions <laughs> i think yes we have taken too many i am just posting uh, today's link on linkedin link on the chat uh, sorry okay just oh one second this is to everyone sure. i'm posting a link a uh, linkedin link which we have uh, our post so people everybody who ever actually participated can actually go and give your feedback on the link that uh, however it helpful about the brats and dr anvita quick session lot of questions answered and uh, rapid fire <laughs> like thank you anvita uh, and uh, it is a great time we had and lot of learnings from my, my uh, myself too i would request everyone to please if you can switch on uh, your cameras we would like to take a screenshot i would like to also thank you suresh for one inviting me to uh, i think uh, i also learned a lot from couple of the examples that you gave and the questions were also very nice so uh, i i would just say that if anybody else wants to kind of ask me more questions i'm always available on linkedin you can always reach out to me hey dev jani bye <laughs> how are you are ma'am you also there wow ma'am you can unmute yourself can unmute yourself okay yeah we uh, where is urvi urvi needs to come we <laughs> are oh that's urvi nice the backbone of the entire thing thank you <laughs> yeah that's nice okay i shashank harji ji manoj Hello, kumar hello everybody Yeah, and Anita, I had something to say when you were talking about this. Uh, somebody was asking from Luxembourg regarding this business. What I felt yeah. that uh, moment there is a change, the new normal becomes the normal of your life. Absolutely. Now, ever since ever since uh, decades, people have always known from Gurukul system that the shishya has to go to close to the guru. from right. so uh, when there is a change the environment as such enables and it makes people adapt to it so that becomes yes, the new absolutely and yes, then there yes. is uh, the what was pre established that goes and the new things get established right that becomes the new norm then yes that is the new normal that is the new normal yes. today my yes. whole day i i mean uh, i was not able to join at four because my I was uh, having another online session till four, but that continued till four thirty, four twenty-five. I closed that and four twenty-seven. I joined y'all. Fantastic! So nice! So, so nice! Wonderful. I hope session. it was useful. I hope Suresh and I were useful to you. Yeah, yeah, it was. They were very nice. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Questions were very, very well, and uh, very suitable to the current situations, and the answers were very apt. So it was good insight for everybody. Yes. Thank and you, Madam, for joining us. And I must always thank Suresh. Now I must ask John since now for twenty seven. I told her for twenty five I closed one. For twenty seven I joined this one. I was just waiting <laughs> for that to get over. <laughs> <laughs> and I must thank Suresh. I must thank Suresh that uh, it was a wonderful thing that. So it's a nice way of engaging 
and in this interaction is very very fruitful i'm so thank glad you, thank so you glad. So yes and we just have we have to thank purvi also yeah. thank you purvi hai to sab kuch mumkin hai aisa hai modi hai nahi hai pata nahi purvi hai to sab kuch mumkin hai nahi nahi aisa kuch nahi it's like it's like that movie no that movie uri uri movie what is that uh, what What is the Josh? the Josh? What's the Josh? How's the Josh? How's the Josh? How's the Josh? Yeah, how's the Josh? Chalo, I'm taking the show. Let's click. Yeah, yeah, please, please. So please uh, just go to that link and give the feedback. I have actually posted on the yeah, yeah. chat. Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Absolutely. Somil. Thank you, Shang, Harjit ji, Deer, Yatin, Shimona, Devjani, ma'am. Thank you so much. We would like to have a session with you directly. Same. Yes, yes. I would. I was just thinking that I'll propose that let's have something more to discuss. Um, these are good platforms where we can little really share knowledge. Uh, yes. Definitely, I'm going to reach okay. you tonight, to evening. Sure, okay. sure. Bye. Sure, Bye. sure. Thank you, doctor. Bye, Thank Anvita. You, Suresh. Bye, all. Thank you. Bye, Anvita. Bye, Suresh. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, doctor. Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you, Mr. Suresh. Thank you. It was a great session. Thank you. It was indeed a great session. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.